The week six waiver wire is deep with talent. It's good at running back. We got some wide receivers to look at. Tight end's going to tight end, and quarterback's going to quarterback. But there's a dichotomy in the works. There's a war in the streets on the waiver wire, and it's between our stashes here. A lot of people are looking at Jalen Wright. A lot of people are looking at Blake Corm. They're wondering who to pick up, who to drop, what to do with these running backs, what to anticipate, what to look for. So we're going to deep dive both running backs today and kind of like a battle looking at their advanced analytics, their situations. But before we dig in, you need to click that subscribe button right now because we're going hard in the paint doing these deep dives every day. As many players as possible so you get the information needed to set your lineups, make your moves, make your trades, or whatever that's needed. Ric Flair's watching you, so click that button. Stop missing out. But we got a battle between two running backs with two good profiles coming out of college here. That's very enticing that are in situations that could break favorably to either running back's way. And it's very interesting to see neither of them have been tremendously productive. But as of late, week five, we're seeing them get more touches, more work. Devin HM went out with a concussion. We saw Blake Corm get five touches, but looked explosive with those five touches. Going back to college, because there's some indicators with their collegiate numbers here. We saw Jalen Wright rush for over 1,000 yards in the SEC. 4.35 yards after contact per attempt in 2023. 3.75 in 2022. And he's got speed to burn. We saw that on the field. He's got 4.3 speed. And Blake Corm was very productive. In 2022, one of the most productive running backs in college football. Would have went out for the 2023 NFL Draft but hurt his knee. Then in 2023, we're ramping up from that knee injury. We started hitting again on the back end of that season. Started looking good, but it was a slow ramp up in 2023. But when you look at the 2022 numbers, 3.35 yards after contact per attempt, 832 yards, 73 missed tackles forced, one of the top running backs in college football doing so, one of the most productive running backs in college football over the last couple years. And looking at a running back like this, he was very sound at all phases of the game. He was the most NFL ready running back in the 2024 NFL draft class. He has upside with that. Landed with the Rams, fits his talent level very well. As with Jalen Wright, he landed with the Miami Dolphins who loves 4-3 speed all over the field, and they picked up another running back in right in the fourth round at a good discounted cost who fits their offense. Both these running backs, the story with them is they fit the offense they play with. Quorum is a launch pail running back who you can trust, who's very dependable, who's good at all phases of the game. Jalen Wright is a rocket running back. You give him a lane, he's good as gone. Not as nuanced, not as great with the vision, not as patient. He's not as great in pass protection, can't chain together moves. But Blake Corum, on the other hand, doesn't have the speed, doesn't have the upside per touch like a Jalen Wright does. But a Jalen Wright does not have the dependability that you're going to catch from a Blake Corum to be your every down back. But we're looking at the Rams here. It's the Kyron Williams show. We got Ronnie Rivers waiting in the wings, but Blake Corum has just 13 rushing attempts on the season. Kyron Williams, 95 already for 360 yards. We're on pace for well over 200 touches, maybe even pushing 300 touches on the season. And Kyron Williams leads all running backs in opportunity share, 97.3%. That is elite. That is top tier. You can't get much higher than that. And also, he leads all running backs and routes ran. He's getting that workload. On top of that, he's leading all running backs and pass blocking snaps with 47. So what does this say when we look at Kyron Williams and Blake Corm and Ronnie Rivers? If something happens to Kyron Williams, Blake Corm or Ronnie Rivers, more than likely Blake Corm, because he's the better talent, will get that work, get that opportunity, if not be split among those two running backs and they will have to deal with that workload together and it'll probably be like a 60-40 split but Blake Corm's got the upside there to really pop he's got a 14.6% snap rate over the last two games snaps per game is going up on top of the touches Kyron Williams though 
when you get that many touches, the odds of injury increase because you're getting into contact more. You're getting hit more. You're blocking more. When you block, that's contact most of the time. Unless you're riding out the defensive end or anything, that's a little bit less. You're running routes. Maybe you get targeted. The ball comes your way. Maybe you get hit. There's more opportunities for things to happen compared to most running backs in the National Football League. Even the top running backs. He's getting a ton of work. So you're looking at Blake Corum. They drafted him for a reason in the third round. They would not have done so if they thought Ronnie Rivers was a stud. And we've seen Ronnie Rivers in the situation without Kyron Williams and a lead back in. It ain't glorious. Blake Corum was one of the top running backs in all of college football the last two years and is a guy that can be massive productive and has some similarities to Kyron Williams, different running backs but both dependable between the tackles, pass protection, and catching the ball out of the backfield. So he slots into that role pretty good if something happens. But we look at the Dolphins, though. Devin A. Chain has a concussion, but the Dolphins have a bye week this week. So that might not matter, but it might because that might cause the coaching staff to realize, like, hey, we got to use some other running backs. Jalen Wright's starting to get more touches per game now. He's starting to get more opportunities, and he's a running back. That only needs a handful of touches a game. He can go with less than 10 and still give you a spike week. He can give you upside on any given week. On any Sunday, he can go off. He just needs really just one run because he can score from anywhere on the football field. He can hit 22 miles per hour on the field. If he sees the open lane, he's got the angle. He's good to go for the score. Jalen Wright's got that upside. He can share the workload and you don't have to worry about him. And when you're looking at Devin HN, he's out with a concussion, might be back sooner than later, and they're on bye. So it's not like you're going to use Jalen Wright this week. Jalen Wright got touches last week, though. 13 carries, 86 yards. Don't forget about Raheem Mostert. So he's not just competing with Devin HN, he's also competing with Mostert for touches. So even if HN goes down or Mostert goes down, he's still got competition. He needs two running backs to go down for him to see a large workload. But, like I just said, he does not need a large workload to be productive. 13 carries, this amount of work, is good enough for a running back like this. This is the Keaton Mitchell effect, where you only need a few touches on any given Sunday, you could go off. He's got the Will Fuller effect, where there's a lot of games where you get nothing, and then boom, pops off for 20, 30 fantasy points. A lot of games where there's nothing, boom, pops up for 20, 30 fantasy points. Off and on like that, like a missile, because Jalen Wright is a rocket running back. We're looking at the targets out of the backfield. Devin and Chain runs a lot of routes, 19 per game. Raheem Mostert also runs a lot of routes per game. If something happens to one of those backs, he's running more routes per game, and he's going to get more routes per game as he gets more acclimated to the offense, and that could be later in the season. They're going to want to get him in the flat with space when you can run 22 miles per hour on the field when you have 4-3 speed. Just like HN, they want to be able to change out those running backs and still have that top-tier speed. They're going to have that with Jalen Wright. That's why they drafted him, but not as nuanced as Blake Corum. So when you're looking at these running backs, who are you picking up? Which one can you stash, or do you have the room to stash both? When I look at these two running backs, I'm looking at the talent. Blake Corum's more dependable. He's a better pure running back. Between the tackles, catch the ball in the backfield, pass blocking. If I had an NFL team, that would be the running back I would want. When I look at pure fantasy football right now, I'm looking at Jalen Wright as an upside guy. The upside's immense. The running back situation with the Dolphins is also very sketchy. You also got the quarterback situation there. We don't know what's going to happen. Where with the Rams, we got Matthew Stafford. The running back I want out of this is Blake Corum. He's the guy I want for the long term. If I'm looking more for the now, like for next week, not this week, for week seven, maybe Jalen Wright if I'm playing in short bursts. But for the long haul in this offense, with Kyron Williams, with how they're using him, I think Blake Corum might get his opportunity somewhere down the line, and you need two running backs to go down for Jalen Wright to get more workload. However, Jalen Wright's already getting more workload, getting more opportunities. That might be more enticing for you. I suggest stashing one of these running backs. These two are high-end stashes. When I say Blake Corum over Jalen Wright, he's a better running back. He's in a very good situation. 
I trust the quarterback play. But there are uncontrollable variables here that could allow Jalen Wright to be better due to injuries, due to just getting more opportunities, due to the Dolphins being decimated, not really playing for anything and just using him in the back half of the season, due to Kyron Williams not getting injured and just sucking up all these touches for a full season and being an Iron Man. That could potentially happen. That being said, you're betting on people getting injured. You're betting on running backs getting opportunities somewhere down the line that you can't forecast. However, if I'm looking at this from a pure talent standpoint, pure running back situation standpoint, I like Blake Corn the best, but I do want to stash them both. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching, catch you on the next video.